We go now to Filippo Giovara, uh, also born on the fourth of uh, on the fourth of uh, of March. <clears throat> Filippo Giovara, but he lived uh, almost two hundred years later. So Michelangelo was born in fourteen seventy five. Filippo Giovara was born two hundred three years later, and he died in seventeen thirty six. A very interesting architect. Uh, also interested in theater, he drew he drew uh, drew a lot, and also uh, created uh, stage design, a baroque architect. Quite interesting, Filippo Giovara. Let's read about him. Filippo Giovara, born uh, March seventh, in sixteen seventy eight, was an Italian architect, active in a late baroque style, who worked primarily in Italy, Spain, and Portugal. Juvara was born in Messina, Sicily, and we are going to see a beautiful uh, small church that Juvara built in, in, in Messina. And this is important. He was born in Sicily uh, to a family of goldsmiths of engravers. After spending his formative years with his family in Sicily, where he designed Messina's festive settings for the coronation of Philip V of Spain and Sicily, Juvara moved to Rome in 1704. There he studied architecture with Carlo and Francesco Fontana. Some drawings of Filippo Juvara, uh, he drew a lot and he drew well. Uh, and as I said, he was very interested in theater. These are stage designs. Um, you know, the relationship between architecture and theater is a reality. Uh, some important architects uh, did also stage design, and he is one of them. So drawings from this Roman period from 1704, 1714, just to have some kind of a time framing here. Um, Piranesi, for example, uh, who himself drew and engraved a lot, uh, was born in 1720. So he was a little bit younger than Filippo Giovara. Well, you know, this is a, a possible uh, solution if you don't have clients, if you you know, uh, struggle to, to, to work in an office. You can always, if you can survive, you can always draw in the evening at home, you know, either digitally or manually. Uh, if these people express themselves in this way, we could too. So, Filippo Juvara, Filippo Juvara, you know, monumental architectures imagined for the stage design or otherwise. Uh, frustrated architects always existed. I'm absolutely sure, not just in the present. So, you know, someone said architecture is about dreaming. Well, if it, if, if it would be so simple, but there is this side to architecture, you know, in the end, Maybe at the end of the day, it is kind of, you know, about dreaming. And in order to dream, you just need a pencil or some paper or a pen or, uh, you know, uh, an old laptop or whatever. You can, uh, you can envision all kinds of things. Maybe not build, buildable even, although preferably they should be. But the idea is to keep going. The Basilica of Superga, 1731. So again, Piranesi was born in 1720. He was 11 years old, Piranesi. I don't know why I keep thinking of Piranesi. Maybe because, because uh, he's one of the few whose date of birth I know very well. So one of Juvara's masterworks, the Basilica Church of Superga was built in 1731 and rises at the top of a mountain overlooking the city of Turin. We talked uh, the other day about uh, Guarino Guarini, who also worked in Turin, a great architect. So uh, this building, this church, it was part picturesque monument and part royal mausoleum for the family of Savoy. 
reputedly the site was chosen because of a vow taken here by then the duke and future king victor amadeus anyway i'm not going to read everything i usually don't like to read during this presentation construction was arduous and took over 14 years including two years to flatten the fount, fount mountain top this is something frank lloyd white was against to build something tall or taller on top of a mountain but they flattened the mountain top and at incredible cost and effort to bring the stones and supplies to the peak behind the church was a monastery the classical portico is appended to a centralized church with a highly vertical 75 meter baroque dome anyway uh, the letter creates a mountain atop a mountain effect exactly again what frank lloyd white was against so here it is the mountain on top of a mountain but we are talking about a man-made mountain on top of a god man made, made mountain which men try to flatten uh, let's only hope putin is not flattening uh, mountains uh, and us together with the mountains i don't know i mean this is a building that uh, you know it's rather triumphalist for my taste but uh, you know i mean the very choice of the site you know these people really like to suffer or they like to be closer to the angels or to the gods or to god himself anyway uh filippo juvara did his job build the building there uh, you know at an uh, extreme expenditure and also with great efforts but it was built i like more uh, what is here besides i mean behind this uh, whitish uh, portico i don't know this portico so sometimes they look uh, artificial for my taste but anyway it's a basilica uh, quite large uh, larger than these pictures show uh, and uh, yes splendidly positioned a little too spend splendidly i would say it's a monastery behind the church uh, obviously a well-to-do monastery i mean uh, just look at how many windows are here you know this is a this is a citadel uh, the building uh, yeah i mean you know any church built at that time is uh, triumphal and triumphalist but you'll see the small church he built in messina which in, would surprise you and which in my opinion is beautiful and is very modest compared to this uh, mammoth uh, work on top of the mountain anyway of course the dome is splendid and all the rest all these churches uh, employed good architects uh, and uh, they did their job according uh, ac accordingly so again this is filippo juvara 1731 or so uh, well that's when the building i think started uh, or it ended the construction i don't know anyway it was at the beginning of the of the of the 18th century and this was built with <laughs> with all the technology we have today with a, with a lot of stone now just to bring the stone there on top of the mountain you can imagine it was a pharaonic uh, effort santa cristina in turin he did just the facade and i like this facade it's uh, baroque indeed now i see there are two uh, i imagine he did this one uh, and then who did the other one? I don't know, but uh, they are uh, twins. Santa Cristina, Filippo Juvara. You know, the fact that he worked for the theater didn't uh, stop him from working for the church and vice versa. So, you know, the sacred and the profane as uh, Mircea Eliade would say. Filippo Juvara. Oh, 
born on March 7th, just like uh, Baltazar Peruzzi and just like Douglas uh, Cardinal, about whom I will talk next. Palazzo Madama, also the facade, here it is, and the palazzo, it is indeed. Where is it? Uh, it doesn't say. It's probably in Turin uh, again. Um, yeah, a palazzo. But he, he did more than the facade. He also, it's like a, a narrower, narrower space with the staircases behind the facade. We are going to see. Zuvara. I, I think he did all this block, you know, from uh, with this thickness in front of a, of a building which extends further in the back. Yes, here, here it is. The interior is also him, so it's not just a fa facade per se. Baroque. But Turin Baroque, a little different from uh, the Roman Baroque. I mean, didn't these buildings intimidate me a little bit, uh, inevitably, you know, first of all, they are not meant for proletarians you know, uh, in the 21st century or the 20th, they, they, they belong to a different social structure, uh, but uh, this doesn't make them, uh, you know, uh, indifferent to, you know, the evolution or the evolution or the history of aesthetics of architecture. Palace of Venaria, he, he worked with other architects, uh, this this room and the, particularly the the pavement is uh, is uh, is rather famous. Uh, he did this room, but the other architects uh, worked with him on this palace. But this is uh, not the most unpleasant uh, space or room ever built. Uh, anyway, Filippo Giovanni. Now you can see a huge building. A castle of Rivoli, uh, working with uh, uh, some of the architects you were previously with. Some of the uh, parts of this building are uh, ruined, but even as ruins are beautiful, in my opinion. As uh, Louis Kahn said, a ruin tells us how a building was made. And uh, this is not the only reason why certain people like ruins. Uh, there are beautiful books about ruins. Uh, great architectures in ruins are uh, still very seductive. As uh, Gemme Cantacuzino said about the uh, columns in Persepolis, and uh, there are just columns, some columns scattered, um, he said, for the spirit, they are enough. And uh, it's probably true. Uh, here there are also some modern interventions. Uh, you know, the passage of time is the passage of time. It looked like this, but uh, what remained is this. Anyway, Filippo Juvara again. I personally like modern interventions within the, the fabric of, a, of, a, of an old building or a ruined building. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, like here, you know, obviously this is a modern intervention. There are others. It's okay. I think we should engage the, the ruins, entice them to life, not keep them, you know, uh, at a safe distance. Now, personally, I would bring some modernity into the Roman Forum. I know this is, sounds almost sacrilegious, if, if, if not entirely sacrilegious, but I even thought of launching a competition, you know, about, um, you know, creating a modern uh, public bus right there in the Roman Forum, 
uh, or uh, you know who the Diocletian um, the baths were to engage the the old ruins to bring in a way to and live under that. But I know there are risks, but. Um, you know, what is the alternative to keep them, you know, safely, you know, caged within the restricted area? You see here, there are modern interventions uh, in interaction with, uh, they mingle with the old. I think that's good. A church of San Filippo Neri, also in Turin, uh, here it is, a splendid church, at least the inside, the, the outside, uh, maybe less so, at least uh, the front elevation. But the interior is, uh, I, I don't like this. This looks like a New York Stock Exchange. This uh, classicist, uh, I don't know if he did this because the building behind is not like this, but uh, the interior is uh, impressive. Filippo Jovar. Baroque architect. I am rushing a little bit to arrive at Messina because that is a work I truly love. Uh, a small church he built in, in, in the place where he was born, actually, in Sicily. Now, the Church of Santa Croce, also in Turin. This is also a nice building because of its modernity almost. It's stripped of details, stripped of ornaments. It's, um, you know, and, and what is intriguing also is that this is not a cylinder as you might expect. Expect It's actually in plan an ellipse, not a circle. So it, it's, it's something uh, positive, I would say about this building. The interior, yes, it's, it's, it's Baroque, but uh, the exterior um, it has a certain austerity which could qualify it for being almost modern. You see on the ceiling that it's, it's actually a, an ellipse, uh, which uh, always attracted the Baroque mentalities. A fine work, I would say, by uh, Filippo Giovara. I personally like more this church than the one, the mountain built on top of a mountain that we saw earlier. Did he work with yellow tracing paper? Maybe it's kind of a yellow tracing paper or, ye or yellowed, you know, because of the time that passed. Is it a pencil drawing? It does look like a pencil drawing. So, you know, a pencil drawing on a, on a yellow tracing, on yellow tracing paper or yellowing tracing paper could last a long time, you know, 300 years. It was bombed, it seems. Maybe, maybe it looks so almost modern because it was rebuilt. Although it was rebuilt from what we see here, respecting the, you know, the, as it was built uh, previously. Now a castle again with Guarino Guarini, truly a remarkable architect himself. And it was his birthday the other day. Uh, now here, no one would contest that this is indeed Baroque. Um, anyway, these are buildings not for proletarians. Maybe they don't have um, much uh, interest for us, except from a historical point of view, certainly no such so-called living rooms. Who can afford today such a living room? Maybe Mr. Trump or maybe not even him since he is not any longer the president of the United States, but he still has a few casinos and he can cover the walls and everything else with gold. Uh, but still, I think even a modern day president of a country large or so less large uh, would be a little bit envious of this space. I mean, this is, uh, you know, uh, it's a rich room. Not for everybody, but the grass grows in the same way in front of a palace as it does in front of a, an apartment building. Chiesa Madonna del Carmine in Torino, 1732-1735. So Piranesi was between 12 years old and 15 years old. 
Um, I like this interior, maybe a little more than the interiors of uh, none other than uh, Andrea Palladio, whom I love and I admire immensely. But I think Andrea Palladio, I, I, I have my, my, my suspicions. He was not an arduous believer. The interiors of the churches of uh, Palladio are uh, not, they are not austere, but uh, they, they have a simplicity that is a little bit uh, almost strange if we compare his churches with his, uh, let's say, uh, rural villas. Um, but uh, Juvara, you know, Juvara as a Baroque architect uh, worked a little bit on the inside of the building, at least, if not always on the outside. And of course, the artists who worked with him, sculptors, painters, but look, this building also was affected dramatically by uh, the predecessors of Mr. Putin. It is unbelievable to me that the tragedy, the human tragedy continues, that we learn nothing from the Second World War. And during the Second World War, we obviously learn nothing from the First World War. And now, we are confronted with the same madness. Everybody knows that da death is the result. And yet the human vanity doesn't end, doesn't stop. It, it, it is, and, and it is said that Mr. Putin knows history. Well, if he knows history, he also knows how Hitler died, doesn't he? And yet he doesn't stop, I don't understand it. A palace here, another palace for another proletarian. Of course not. Uh, but look at this interior. Of course it's magnificent. But when it was built, it was not built for tourists. Uh, we are happy now, of course, to look at these nice pictures. But imagine for, for, for whom this, this palace was built. Anyway. So we move forward with Filippo Juvara. Please be kind and turn off the microphone. I hear a noise in the back, in the background, unless you want to say something. We'll, I'll try to be rather quick so you don't get bored. We'll arrive at an interesting, uh, rather interesting architect from uh, Canada uh, very soon, uh, Douglas um, Cardinal. Here, the geometry is very, very, I mean, you look at the interior and then you look at the exterior. The exterior is more strict. The interior has more fluidity because of the paintings and so on. But the exterior is, you know, very so-called architecture. It's the interior that is more Baroque than the exterior. I mean, look at the planning of the whole. It's a massive, it's a big, complex of buildings. It's not just this. As you can see, it's huge. Now, the Royal Palace of La Grande in whatever, and uh, this, uh, you know, another palace. Uh, Filippo Juvara built a lot, dreamt a lot, did a lot of stage design. Uh, he was active and he didn't die uh, like the architects die these days, over 90. No, he died over 50. People didn't live such long lives at that time. Well, Michelangelo did, but even Michelangelo didn't go over 90. Uh, today, almost everybody is over 90. Frank, uh, Frank Gehry is 93, Alvaro Siza 93 or 94. Doshi 93, Kenneth Frampton 91, uh, <laughs> Peter Eisenman 89. <laughs> anyway, the architects live a, a very long lives these days. So I keep joking. I tell the students, the school might not uh, guarantee you uh, a job after you graduate, but they will guarantee you a very long life. Anyway, of course it's splendid, everything. Too bad no one lives there. Church for San Gregorio in Messina. Now this work I like very much. It's a small church, as you can see, and uh, it has something uh, uh, almost uh, Asian or Oriental about it. Is I almost felt like saying Russian. Uh, it's, it's a church 
I think it still exists. I like it the most in this old picture here. You know, uh, this is Baroque and it could, it could, it could belong to, uh, you know, certain part of Asia, but also certain part of, of South America. Um, it's a surprising work, in my opinion, very, you know, very, very elaborated here on, on the front facade and the interior. Um, it is Baroque, but it has something that that uh, qualifies it for, um, you know, a, a different kind of Baroque. This one also was affected by war, but look at the interior. This almost looks like, a, you know, it, it's just like, almost like an Orthodox church. And uh, maybe also because of the scale, I don't know. And, but also it has something Oriental. It, it, it intrigues me, this building in Messina uh, by uh, Filippo Giovara. Uh, remember he was born in, uh, in, in Messina. Very interesting building. I don't know very well what's going on here. It seems it was affected by war. Wars affect everything. Here are two books uh, published uh, uh, on, uh, on uh, Filippo Jubara, or is the same book and the two sides of the covers is possible. Now we arrive at the Quartieri Militari in Rome, Torino again, uh, the military quarters. Yes, there was a military at that time too. It seems human beings cannot do without uh, preparing for wars, and yet they cannot avoid wars. Uh, you know, I, I like the architecture. It's austere, yes, it's, it's uh, appropriate for the military. You are going to see pictures, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, the past 19th century, whenever the picture was taken, and also from the present. There are two identical buildings actually facing each other, like twin twin buildings. I like again these old pictures, and you see the, you know, the structure of the columns of the walls. Uh, uh, strangely, perhaps uh, with a uh, simpler, more primitive technology of um, taking photographs. Some of the photographs I have myself photographs from 1910, 1920 excellent photographs, technically speaking. Um, anyway, uh, look, this is a picture from, I don't know, the beginning of the 20th century. What distinguishes it or the city of Turin, this area of Turin from uh, this area of Turin now is the absence of the car. Its majesty, the car is not here. And you see the, the urban spaces, uh, it's rather different. And uh, you see at uh, the top uh, an engraving with the buildings and at the bottom, uh, you know, a scene from uh, everyday life now. Uh, yes, there were carriages. Yes, there were people. Now maybe less people and certainly less horses, uh, but more cars. Anyway, maybe they are not so different. Now there are art galleries here. Um, so, moving forward with Filippo Jovara in Turin, a drawing by him for Turin, for what we see, the twin buildings for the military, and that's it.